This week, Mel joins me for our annual Player Attack Christmas gift guide, presents for gamers that aren't just games. And Johnny Robot has a bit of a video guide showing just how easy it is to change the hard drive in your PlayStation 4. This is Player Attack. Hi, I'm Jessica Citizen, and this week the Counter-Strike global offensive professional scene has been stung by cheaters not once, but twice. First up, the Esports Entertainment Association caught a gamer by the name of Simon Beck, discovering that he used an aimbot when playing the game. The association passed these details on to Valve, and once the company's anti-cheat software were updated, Valve was shocked to learn how many people were using hacks to do better in-game. The original gamer claims that 30 to 40 percent of professional gamers use third-party apps. At this stage, at least two pro gamers have been kicked from their teams after it was revealed they used aimbots, which saw both Team Epsilon and Team Titan kicked from this year's DreamHack Winter Competition, the world's largest CSGO tournament. But it doesn't stop there. At DreamHack itself, the Counter-Strike Global Offensive quarterfinals were forced into a rematch after it was discovered both teams were using in-game exploits. Swedish team Fnatic was originally pointed out to officials after using an in-game boost, but after some inspection both Fnatic and French opponent LDLC were found to be using texture transparency and an immortal bug. A rematch was scheduled but Fnatic forfeited the game, explaining that the drama distracted from the joy of Counter-Strike. LDLC went on to defeat Na'Vi in the semi-finals and eventually beat NIP 2-1 in the weekend's grand finals. On to happier news now, and with Super Smash Bros. for Wii U out just about everywhere, Nintendo is happy to confirm that the game is already a huge success. It sold nearly half a million copies in just three days after its North American launch, and that was well before the Black Friday and Cyber Monday sales. The new Nintendo 3DS XL handheld is also selling crazy well, making it the best-selling gaming platform in Japan since its launch less than two months ago. In fact, the new console is selling so well that Nintendo is discontinuing production of the original 3DS XL now that everybody's buying a new one. At this stage, there has been no announcement about whether this decision will expand to other regions or if the older model standard 3DS will be affected. The new Nintendo 3DS family has only launched in Australia and New Zealand outside of Japan, so it's early days yet. Something that's not been going so well is Assassin's Creed Unity. Publisher Ubisoft has acknowledged that the game hasn't quite had the glorious launch it deserved, even with a massive patch fixing more than 300 issues. The studio is still working to fix the problem, but Ubisoft has offered an olive branch. Everyone who purchased a copy of Assassin's Creed Unity has been given upcoming premium DLC Dead Kings for free. Everybody who already paid for Dead Kings as part of the Season Pass is getting a free game instead, and the Season Pass itself has now been scrapped. Moving on, Tim Schafer has announced that Act 2 of Broken Age has been delayed into 2015, launching more than a year after the first act hit shelves. We're promised that the crowdfunded adventure is all but complete behind the scenes and that it is playable from start to finish, but putting the finishing touches on things means the complete adventure won't be ready until early next year. Tim Schafer's former colleague Ron Gilbert has also dipped his toes back in the point-and-click adventure waters, taking to Kickstarter with a new game, Thimbleweed Park, a collaboration with veteran developer Gary Winnick. Hi, I'm Ron Gilbert. And I'm Gary Winnick. And we really, really want to make Thimbleweed Park. It's a true successor to Maniac Mansion. It will be like you found a classic adventure game you've never played before. It's been our dream for years. Don't destroy our dream. Why are you mad at us? What did we ever do to you? We don't want your money anymore. We're sorry. Please back our Kickstarter. <coughs> The game, described as the true spiritual successor to Maniac Mansion and Monkey Island, was fully funded within less than a week, suggesting that gamers really do want more of the classic genre. In indie game news, developer 11-Bit Studios has confirmed that their project, This War of Mine, has covered its creation costs in just two days of being on sale. The game, a very different take on modern combat, has been purchased by gamers in more than 90 countries, 
and those gamers have left more than 2,000 comments, 96% of which have been positive. If you haven't checked it out yet, maybe you should. Remember, this is the developer that gave its own game away once it realised it was being pirated. And on a similar topic, there's been a major update for DayZ, with the zombie horror survival game finally getting vehicles. The in-game world is 225 square kilometres, which feels really huge when you have to traverse it by foot, especially when your shoes keep wearing out. So the folks at Bohemia Interactive have finally introduced vehicles to the DayZ experimental branch. They're still set to undergo a bunch of changes, but for now, if you can find one, get ready to race around Chernorus. And just when you thought it was safe to return to your gaming platform of choice, From Software has announced Dark Souls 2, a scholar of the first sin, is headed your way in April 2015. This is the equivalent to the Prepare to Die edition of the original Dark Souls, that is, the original game plus all three DLC locations, but this time the studio is throwing in some extra in-game content as well. If you've already got Dark Souls 2, don't think this means you need to buy a new copy of the game just to get the extra stuff. From Software is also releasing all of the extra enemies, in-game events, NPCs and gameplay improvements as a free patch. And finally this week, if you're still buzzing over a certain teaser trailer release last weekend, Microsoft has a little something for you tucked away in Minecraft for Xbox. The Star Wars Classic Skin Pack brings 55 character skins from episodes 4, 5 and 6, and we're not just talking Luke, Leia, Han and Chewie. Of course, the Fab Four are all there, with a few different looks, but there's also a stack of minor characters. A Cantina Band member, a TIE Fighter pilot, Greedo, Admiral Akbar, and even Wicket. And in case you thought these would come with a ridiculous price tag, think again. The Star Wars Classic Skin Pack from Microsoft for Xbox will set you back a measly three bucks. Bargain. For more information on any of these stories, or to keep up to date with the latest gaming news, head to playerattack.com. But for now, stick around, got plenty more still to come. Believe it or not, it's December again already, which means that if you haven't already sorted out your Christmas shopping, you should probably start making a list and checking it twice. While you've probably figured out which games you need to pick up, and goodness knows there are some great ones out this season, we've rounded up a few ideas for some slightly unusual presents that would look great under any tree. First up, something we featured on Player Attack earlier this year, the Braven BRV1 speaker. This little baby connects to your smartphone via Bluetooth, stays charged for hours and is completely waterproof. We literally ran ours over and threw a bucket of ice water at it and it's still going strong. The Braven BRV1 also doubles as a speakerphone or a power bank in case you need to charge something over USB. For a single speaker, it sounds pretty good. It's never going to be the same as a full-on stereo system, but it is miles ahead of listening to something on your iPhone speakers. On one hand, this makes it great for people enjoying the great outdoors, maybe lounging by a pool party or going camping. But on the other, it means you can hang it in your shower and listen to your tunes of choice while you wash your hair. Genius. Sticking with music for a moment, here's something very different. Believe it or not, these are noise cancelling earbuds from Bose and they are amazing. We'll admit the QuietComfort 20 or QuietComfort 20i if you want inline smartphone controls aren't cheap. This pair will set you back 400 bucks Australian thanks to Bose charging us extra for just living down under or 299 if you can get them in the US. They are, however, worth every cent. They sound great and are surprisingly comfortable thanks to the rubber tips on each earbud. A single charge will last for more than a day of use, so if you want them for something like a long haul flight, they're ideal. But here's the best part. Unlike most noise cancelling headphones, these earbuds work even if you don't have the noise cancelling turned on. Or if the battery's gone flat, this is really useful because the noise cancelling is incredible, to the point that we don't recommend using them on public transport because you're guaranteed to miss your stop. Last year we suggested Sphero as a pretty neat little Christmas gift. The simple white ball secretly hiding a fun robotics kit. This year we're looking at its big brother, Ollie. While we really love the programming possibilities of Sphero, Ollie is something different, putting the spotlight firmly on speed, racing and tricks. It zips around at 14 miles per hour, that's 6 metres per second, and is capable of some pretty neat things. 
Ollie is built out of super tough plastic, so it doesn't matter if you run it straight into a wall while practicing, and you probably will, which is all part of the fun. The smartphone controls take a little getting used to with options for both directional control or a gesture-based system. But once you do get used to it, Ollie is great. Spin in place, jump around, pop wheelies, or just zoom across the room. It's not quite as versatile as Sphero, but it's still a lot of fun. Adelaide-based company Makers Empire has also created an intriguing new 3D printing app that lets you print armour, mohawks and other accessories for Ollie, just in case you wanted some flaming wheels for your little robot. Now, the Urban Go Electric longboard might not be something you expected from us, but it's a pretty awesome bit of technology. It travels at speeds of up to 20 kilometres per hour, that's 12 miles, thanks to a nifty 400 watt motor. That motor is powered by a flexible waterproof battery that bends and twists with the longboard itself. You can charge it over USB, which will take three to five hours, and you will get three hours of riding time out of a single charge. That's enough to take you 35 kilometers away. Oh, it's not like a regular skateboard. You have to get used to it starting up, but once it gets going, it's easy enough. And after a few tries, it feels natural, so it's easy. It's all controlled by a simple handheld remote, which lets you accelerate or brake with a slide of your thumb. If you don't want to carry something extra, there's an alternative. Download the Urban Go app to your iPhone and control your travels directly. Your smartphone will also be able to monitor your speed and distance travelled if you're into that sort of thing. The Player Attack team has already got a few neat Christmas presents too, which we're looking forward to playing with over the next month or so. The first is the Games Vanguard Personal Gaming Environment. We've been intrigued by these gaming briefcases for a while now and have finally gotten our hands on one, the Super Shiny Black Edition. This is a rugged case designed to carry your console wherever you want, even if that's just from room to room. It fits any modern console, Xbox 360, Xbox One, PS3 or PS4, and it comes complete with its own 19-inch monitor so you can get your gaming fix no matter where you are. The Vanguard has been specifically designed to fit in most airline carry-on luggage restrictions, but even if you have to put it under the plane or throw it in the back of a car for a long trip, it's rugged enough to stand up to quite a lot of punishment. Once you get where you're going, you just plug in the console and plug in your Vanguard and you're good to go. We've got a few road trips planned over the summer break, so when Player Attack returns in 2015, we will have a full review of just how we liked the game's Vanguard. Something else we'll be playing with is PlayStation TV, which has just launched in Australia. It's a set-top box that uses the same hardware as the PlayStation Vita, but instead of having its own screen, it plugs into your TV. If you've got a bunch of Vita games you wanted to see on the big screen, here's your chance. And if your library is not too expansive, PlayStation TV can connect to the internet to grab older PlayStation 1, Vita and PSP games directly from the PlayStation Store. There's also subscription content for the PS Plus members and a bunch of music, movies and television shows. What's really cool though is the ability to use PlayStation TV for remote play. It'll sync with your PS4 and allow you to play games on a different TV. So it's perfect when the families decided they want to watch a movie at exactly the same time as you wanted to play a game. We've heard mixed reports on just how well this all works. Apparently it's a bit awkward and laggy over wireless networks, but we've got all summer to figure out the best way of connecting everything for the best gaming experience. And finally, something a little bit different. If you've got young people on your present list and you're not quite sure what to get them, why not take them to the movies? Big Hero 6 is the first Disney animated film to feature Marvel Comics characters since the company was acquired in 2009. It's inspired by, rather than based on, a Marvel Comics superhero team from the late 90s. But what we get now is very different to the manga-styled original. My brother built Baymax to help people. Hello. It works! Oh, this is amazing! Have a lollipop. Sweet! We can't go against that guy! We're nerds! <laughs> we can be way more. Ah! Why is Baymax wearing carbon fiber underpants? This may undermine my non-threatening, huggable design. Anybody else's suit riding up on him? We could be Oh no. Baby! Yeah, if I wasn't terrified of heights, I'd probably love this. 
But I'm terrified of heights, so I don't love it. Even though Big Hero 6 is out in other parts of the world right now, Aussies and New Zealanders are getting it on Boxing Day, that is December 26, and we hear that the UK is stuck even further behind us. We managed to catch a preview screening earlier this week and have fallen in love with it. Stay tuned to Player Attack for our full review. On the other hand, Into the Woods is out in January, a musical bringing a modern twist to the Brothers Grimm fairy tales like Cinderella, Little Red Riding Hood, Jack and the Beanstalk and Rapunzel. It's from the team behind Chicago and Pirates of the Caribbean on Stranger Tides, so you know you're in for a treat. On the third hand, if giant inflatable robots and summer sing-alongs aren't your thing, or if you'd just prefer something a little more grown up, we recommend heading out to see Fury while it's still in cinemas. The tank's busted. We never run before, why are we gonna run now? I'm gonna hold this crossroad. What are you doing? It's my home. I'm staying here with you. Light him up! If you love movies as much as you love games, stay tuned to Player Attack over summer. We just might have some free passes to give away. Christmas is fast approaching and we all know what that means. No, not world peace and bad sweaters. I'm talking indigestion and fat stacks of presents. One of the things I've been hearing quite a bit this season is my insert relationship status here is a huge gamer, but they've got everything. What can I get them? My first response, a Sega Nomad. But few people are willing to part with that amount of money for something that dumb. Second best suggestion, how about expanding the size of their PS4's hard drive? In this crazy new world of 60 gigabyte installs and DLC packs coming out the wazoo, that 500 gigabyte hard drive that came with is starting to look a little redundant. Sony being the cool guys they are, are happy to let you chuck a bigger one in there and it won't even void the warranty. Thankfully it's not that much of a complex bit of console surgery. But that said, I'm going to show you step by step how to beef up your PS4 with this here WD Blue one terabyte HDD. First step is to back up all your save game data off your old hard drive. You can do this via backing it up to the cloud if you're a PS Plus subscriber, or chucking them on a USB storage device. To back them up to a USB, first insert the device, then go to the settings screen. Next you want to go to application save data management, then save game data in system storage. Followed by copy to USB storage device. Select all the titles you want to back up and then hit copy. Now our data is off the old hard drive, we can remove it. First make sure your unit is completely turned off and then remove the power cord and other cables. Now slide the hard drive cover off like this. Now we have access to the old hard drive. All we have to do is remove this screw and then pull the old hard drive to the front of the system to remove it. Next we remove the four screws holding the old hard drive in the mounting bracket, but be sure not to remove the rubber inserts from the screw holes. Then we pop the new hard drive in the mounting bracket and replace the four screws. Then we slide the hard drive back into the PS4 and attach the first screw we removed. Now we have to reinstall the system software. To do this, you need to download the latest PS4 update and save it to a USB. The update file must be called ps4update.pup, all caps, and saved in a folder called update inside a folder called PS4. Insert the USB and start your PS4 in safety mode by holding down the power button for at least 7 seconds. Select Initialize PS4, Reinstall System Software, and follow these screens to complete the update. And boom! Easy as that! If you want to transfer your saved games onto your new hard drive, connect your USB with them on, go to Settings, select Application Save Data Management, then Save Data on USB Storage Device, and copy to System Storage. Again, select all the titles you want to back up and hit copy. This little bad boy is made by Western Digital and is available at most major retailers. Happy holidays and have fun. 
And that's about it for Player Attack this year. Thanks for watching. We've graced your screens in more than 40 episodes this year, so we will be taking a little bit of a break over the Australian summer. If you don't think you can manage without us, we will be revisiting some of our favourite interviews, reviews and features over the next few weeks. And don't worry, we will be back on your screens in the new year. Before we go, we would like to extend a very special thanks to all of the publishers, developers and distributors who have helped us out over the year. As well as that, though, we want to thank you. Everyone who entered our competition, sent in emails, gave us feedback or liked our posts online, we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you. Player Attack is run by a small team and we value and appreciate everyone who took their time to support this project. We've already started planning how to be even more awesome in 2015. Of course, you can always catch us on playerattack.com. We're on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. And if you've got something you want to say, send us an email, mailbox at playerattack.com, or just hop on our forums. Till next year, I'm Jessica Citizen, and this is Player Attack.